Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. Well, let's have a look at AcousticFeels.com. I found this regular, not no regular, <laughs> I found this uh, video suggested by uh, YouTube to me. So um, I saw it once and I thought it was uh, quite interesting. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Here it is. Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Finally, after many, many years in my life, I get to come to one of my rooms that was built and uh, spend some time tuning and listening and use the proud owner of the room and, and the equipment. And we'll, we'll go through all that for you later, but I am unbelievably impressed, not bragging, but impressed with the performance because Hugh did most of the work. We built the diffusers and sent him foam, and he did all the other work under our guidance and uh, my design. And the room is just absolutely wonderful. The wow. sound stage is huge. Mm -hmm. Depth, width, height, definition, tack and decay, separation, unbelievable. Close your eyes and the speakers disappear. Notice that he has a uh, Griffin speakers. I think it's a Griffin amp here and a Griffin amp there and a um, dampener on the, the amp, which actually makes a, a huge difference when you've got a, a really good sound system. And isn't that the goal? Now, at the price point of all this gear, you know, people are all... What do we have here? I can't really recognize the gear except for this being Griffin. That's something else over here. That looks a bit on the lower class part, <clears throat> and it's something that looks like an Asus router. That's gonna be a, a liability, but um, cool, manly, very professional. Yeah, interesting. Always saying, "Well, I want to see my gear. I want to see the speakers." No, you want to hear the music. Everything else is just a prop and a crutch. I mean, I'd rather have live musicians in this room if we could, not practical. So we have to reproduce the sound and play it back on speakers and amplifiers and all of those good things. But the room is so beautiful in the fact that it gets out of the way and lets the electronics and the music really shine here. Mm -hmm. oh, and like that. I think you're pretty happy with the results. This is a lifelong project since I was teenage years, I've always been interested in audio, especially high-end audio. I heard my first, what I would guess consider high-end speakers were clipped horns. And I could feel my shirt flapping and I was hooked from that point on. Couldn't afford those at the time. So I uh, have spent my life, you know, working hard and getting to this point and finally was able to pull the trigger and build what I consider a dream room. And it's... I also want to say that the dimensions of the room, they look very interesting. I can imagine that they used a lot of times, uh, a lot of time uh, calculating uh, the distance from, from this wall to that wall and the side walls. It just, it does look really impressive, like uh, one of the best rooms I've ever seen. Um, but one big concern, now that I'm looking at it, this is not to do with the room. This is like a no-no that you <laughs> that you should not do that a lot of people with, with big rooms have a tendency of doing. He's pulling his power from this <laughs> plug over here, all the way over here to what looks like the power bar, which is over here. Could be wrong, it could be behind the speaker here, but that takes so much away from the from the full potential of the sound. Just imagine if the power socket was over here and the power bar was right next to it and you only had like about a meter uh, of power cable, that would deliver a much more precise and authentic type of reaction where you wouldn't get this, this uh, slightly messy, unfocused, unclear type of reaction from having a longer power cable. I mean, you can get away with it to some degree, especially 
by doing a lot of stuff like he's like, like he's done in here and it, it's an awesome room without a doubt but but I'm, I'm the type of guy who wants to look for things that can be improved and just don't want to be too overly proud and say like oh we did the best job in the world i always want to look at how can i do it even better how can i get even more that's what i would do i mean it's an awesome room i think it's fantastic i would like to have a room like this and i truly believe that they're right that this is probably one of the best rooms that that you could that you could ever get getting it wife approved is just something um Something a bit different. I don't think a lot of uh, wifeys out there are going to approve of all these panels all over the place. But they might. They they might. Some of them might. But it, it looks awesome. It does really look awesome. Beyond my expectations, I can't describe how good this room sounds. I think you could put any speaker in here, any system and it would just transform that equipment. I went a little beyond that on my equipment and it's like I'm live. Every cut I hear, it's like I'm at the concert. Just look at the distance here. I'm not exactly sure where he's standing, but it does look like a good distance between the the back wall and, 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 and the speakers. I'm not sure how deep the the space is like I'm guessing the room is like seven, eight meters long. Me guessing, but that but that does seem pretty good, pretty pretty good. Great chairs. It's important to have good chairs like this. Uh, a very comfy chair he's got. I would have made a slight difference. I would have found uh, a leather sofa. I know a lot of people don't like leather sofa. I also don't like looking at them and sometimes sitting on some of them. But if you have like a leather sofa, which is like a bit tall, supports your back and goes probably all the way up to your head, that's going to act like an extra speaker. Um, boosting the sound, making your body feel the the whole life a bit more. So I think it's cool. I think it's cool that, that he has this thing for his feet. That's like, <laughs> that, that's so cool. And then you have this like table next to it with, with all the drinks you can put there and the snacks and everything. I mean, th this is just what we're all <laughs> kind of hoping for when, when, we, grow, when we grow up and, and become, you know, I don't know, 45 to 65 years old. We, we all just kind of, we, we want to end at this destination having this type of room having uh, an expert like the guy from acousticfeels.com uh, and um, it it is cool I must admit that it's cool and I've heard some few rooms like this some of them sounded awesome really awesome but some of them that uh, were made in a different way I have to say some of them were also really really bad uh, and just did some few impressive things but yeah I'm, I'm impressed the, the this whole thing impresses me I spend hours down here literally hours and hours and hours going from one track to another to another and what does this sound like and oh my gosh I've never heard that before I've had to go through my entire library again and again it's just absolutely incredible it's so much fun because I bring people over to this room that have never heard a high def before. Again. It's so much fun. Just look how comfy that chair is. That That is really nice. That's probably a lot more comfortable than, than a sofa uh, made out of leather. So it's either ultra comfort or this more uh, sort of a boxy type of uh, leather sofa that kind of wraps you around it, boosting the sound a bit so your, your body gets more engaged into the sound. I mean... I like both alternatives. I like both alternatives. I also like this chair that he has over there. It just these two guys did a very good job. Very good job. I, I must I must say I'm impressed. Because I bring people over to this room that have never heard a high def before, and certainly not at this level, and they're just flabbergasted. Vocals are as if you were in front of the stage. It's uncanny. I, I really can't describe Griffin speaker and, and those, you know, Griffin makes some really good speakers and especially with Griffin gear, 
it's just it's just some next level shit i mean i wouldn't say they make the best speakers in the world but they're, they're up there with like perhaps the top 10 uh players in the world and that and that's that's just ridiculous that 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 whole area there there's a lot of really impressive good uh big speakers uh, in this price category <laughs> private is something you don't want to know how much these cost trust me you have to experience was it worth it a, a thousand percent i mean absolutely a thousand percent worth it the genesis of the project was to do it wow just like a like, like a shed for your tractor <laughs> that that's amazing and it has its own ventilation system that that's neat hvac or whatever they call it a separate building which i did and i built a room inside the building the room takes up the entire steel building it's a steel butler building if you will the room is not connected to the sides of the building it's a standalone room and using Dennis's calculations, which I think is called the golden ratio of proper dimensions of the room, we came up with this particular dimension for this. The That's cool. That's apparently how they build it. Mm. Construction was interesting because it requires a lot of layers of material and different material, which I think is so cool. I don't understand the physics behind it all. But, you know, we had to really think through how to erect the walls because you can't get behind the wall. And you've got all these layers that you have to build. So we pre-built the walls in three sections because the height of the wall is over 12 feet. Because the wall itself is really 14 inches deep, given the outside facing of the wall, etc. 14 inches. That's a lot of weight. And the layering in the wall and the carbon diaphragmatic absorbers that have to go inside the wall cavity, you had to pre-think a lot of things and, and kind of decide how you're gonna do this. We worked it all out. I had a great crew. I just wanna tell you guys that I had stuff like this here, like these empty pocket thingies underneath my floor, underneath my wooden floor, like, like here. If this is the floor, and then we had this underneath like this. And I have to tell you guys, that, that really boosts the sound in a crazy good way. Making a, a small speaker like this size here, like eh, 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 seem more like a, like a speaker this size, almost twice as big. So that can sometimes make, make a sound really, really good. So um, if you're ever building a floor, you might want to consider stuff like that because that can make a... A small pathetic speaker sound a lot better than it really is so um, I kind of miss that I have that a bit in my room if I play on on the short side but then I don't get the the imaging because you know I don't have any sidewalls so um, yeah uh, interesting and we managed to get this place built it is a fortress <laughs> I would probably feel safe if there was a tornado that came through here because it is absolutely built like a tank. But you can't hear anything. You can't hear anything outside. It's quiet as a church mouse in here. And every little nuance of the recording is you can hear the breath. You can hear some. That, that's a very important thing that he says. <clears throat> I've been to so many friends' places where... Um, even the guy who has that that perfect streamer sound, you know, he has like the kitchen next to it where you can hear his family are making the food. And they had like a curtain covering over that part. So you can only hear like 40% of what they're saying. But still, if you can remove stuff like that, so there's no sound, so you can't hear anybody else in the house, that does a lot Trust me, that does a lot. That bring that really brings a lot of the the background detail um, forward in in a very balanced way. Because if you don't do that, if you have a lot of background sound, you are going to be listening to a volume level that is artificially high, and it will be cool. Uh, it will it will do a lot of good, but it will just be fatiguing in the long run so i mean having having that black background uh in a room so you can't hear anything else 
is just almost priceless. Um, I don't really have that in, in my room. I could still, in theory, hear um, people outside um, because I don't have the best quality windows. I could hear um, people down, downstairs if I really wanted to. So, uh, and I can hear like if, if, if someone slams the door downstairs, um, I, I can hear that. And trust me, all of that stuff matters. Um, when you have a person slamming the door downstairs, it does to some degree shake um, the floor and get into your uh, tube equipment, especially if you don't have a proper uh, rack, rack like I do. And these are just like small things that you don't really think about. But in the end, when you add them up all together, they make a huge difference, huge, huge difference. And and it's kind of the, the thing that we don't really think about until we reach levels like this, where when you remove so much of that noise in the, uh, the local environment, you're just able to hear a, a level of depth and, and space and you're able to achieve a sort of a a timing that is so good it's almost as if time stands still compared to what you're used to listening to when you when you're out in the real world it's it's like time stands still and 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 you're able to go um you listen you're you're able to listen more on a three-dimensional scale so uh, very cool very cool indeed one singing and turn their head on the microphone it's just uncanny if anyone is on the fence thinking about doing a dedicated room with this type of technology get off the fence and do it one of the big parts of the room is designing the door and yeah that looks really complex the whole door area thingy wonder if this is necessary this this pattern thing that they did with the door it does look next necessary hmm and creating a, I guess, a, like a studio style door that is comparable to the technology that's in the walls. So the, the doors are interesting. They're again, about 14 inches thick. My brother-in-law actually built the doors. He's a cabinet maker. He came down. I'm pretty handy with myself with tools and things well, like that. And we have to look at that again. figured out how to do it. My brother-in-law actually built the doors. He's a cabinet maker. He came down. I'm pretty handy with myself. <laughs> that is cool with tools and things like that. And we figured out how to do it on the fly. We built these doors over a weekend. So it's perfectly possible to do. The doors weigh 400 to 500 pounds a piece. We decided on ball bearing swivels. We had to cut the door at a 45 degree angle so the door will open and close. Uh, at 90 degrees and a 14 inch door, it ain't gonna open, it's just gonna bind. So we worked through that and the doors turned out terrific. It's like a vault, you know, you pull it open like a so cool. vault and close it, but it's really smooth and you don't feel that much of the weight. And that was fun. We actually had a great, a great time doing it. And I think they turned out terrific. We've got a seam in the door where you can't tell that the doors are closed or, or open. The seam is almost invisible. So I think the <laughs> doors cool. just turned out terrific. What is so uncanny about this room is that these speakers are capable of going down to 16 hertz. They present a really? big, big sound stage. They'll that pressurize the room incredibly. During some heavy bass or drum, you can go into the corners of this room. Most rooms you'll hear pressure just build up. I mean, you'll, you'll feel it in the, in the corners of the room. One corner is different from another corner, et cetera. Not in this room. Um, that, that is very interesting, that observation that he just made. And I also feel that with, with a lot of rooms that I see, because we all live in, in normal houses or apartments, we always have a room leading to another room, which is many times open. And when you have this, this open door area next to the, the stereo or a bit over here with like a meter to spare, um, it just destroys the imaging and destroys the pressure 
and you just lose that 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 sense of depth where you're totally involved in the sound and you just can't press stop and go away and, and go to work because it's just so hypnotic sexy and, and it lures you in when you have this like sophisticated type of room that they created uh, i would really like to own a thing like this hmm. i don't know how he did it but you go from one corner to another and the base is even most of us read the internet and we're looking at other products and things out there i always thought you had to have these massive bass traps and you had to do this and you had to do that there are no bass traps in here not the ones that you think of that go on the corners using dennis's technology which was a leap of faith for me you know it's something i couldn't quite get my head around like how is this going to work with this activated carbon in the stud spaces uh, and the ceiling it's a lot of stuff you have to do wow i wonder if they keep these um if they fill these up with rock wool or what because if you don't do that, that that's going to boost the sound a lot uh, potentially so so it really sounds awesome um but i don't know if it's going to boost it too much i don't know enough about this i'm not an expert oh these might be rock wool bats it looks like that with holes in them I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but that that looks really sophisticated. <laughs> I got to say it's just spectacular. The base is so tight, oh. clean, defined. Again, it, you just have to be in the room oh. to really experience this. I believe this it. room uses a lot of diffusion. I went from a small room where I tried my own diffusion. I tried to build my own quadratics uh they I... yeah these the these things here they they usually destroy the sound a lot and um they they do a lot of good stuff but they have a tendency of uh, really highlighting certain things on, on on the frequency um response so that's horrible especially if you have in the same room windows that that that's like a nightmare trying to balance that out I guess I call them skylines, and I had those, and absorption, and I found out a couple of things. It really opened my eyes. Uh, initially, I used a lot of absorption in the room. What I found out later is it just killed it. It killed yeah. the dynamics of the yeah. room. It was flat, it didn't sound real. Also, with all these normal bass traps people have in corners, they do a lot of good. Trust me, they do a lot of good, but they at the same time also suppress the sound so, so you're censoring it and, and you don't have this full free um neutral sound that that just is even all over the frequency so um yeah i, I get it I've, I've seen a lot of these um pretend foam dampened rooms and with bass traps here and there they do a lot of stuff that's cool interesting and, and, and in some ways really good but i just i just think that overall it's a sort of a bias type of thing where you're only going halfway there um, if you're lucky um, towards what, what he has now. Real, and then I took all of that absorption out, but I had no diffusion. It just had the four walls again with some bass traps. And uh, again, it didn't sound right. There was slap echo, I guess you would call it. It just sounded confused. Everything in the room was confused. I mean, what I would kind of have done differently is perhaps, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not a, a, a total expert like this guy from Acoustic Fields, but I would have had the the sound equipment in the middle here um, perhaps disappearing in the wall without making the cables too long. That could be an idea because just having it behind one of the speakers over here, I mean, that could still work in, in, a, in a really cool room like this, but I feel that you know, you, you kind of want to have the system over here or behind the wall and have like the power socket next to it. So you get the power delivery, which is uh, which is optimal. But, you know, I'm 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 going into small details. These are like the things that I would have done. You have to deal with stuff that's more practical and you don't really think about these types of things until you're like really deep into the project and then you can't really do 
uh, much about it. Uh, it also has to be legal. It has to comply with all kinds of rules and regulations. So it's difficult, you know. Uh, I think he basically did the best that, that he could with his room. And um, awesome, awesome. So when talking to Dennis, using this type of technology, these are 17 well quadratics. They're 16 inches deep. I wanted a lively room that didn't bring the feeling of a live performance, didn't suck the life out of it. Uh. And this room is just spectacular. There's absorption in the room, but it's not overdone. I've never heard anything like this. You can hear the sparkle of symbols. The voices in this room are uncanny. You, you could close your eyes and swear that someone's in front of you. And that's, that's what makes it. It's a two channel listening room only. There's no theater in here. It's a dedicated listening room. It's I think that's good because when you have theater uh, systems and you have to have a, a receiver, five, seven, nine channel, whatever they call it, um, I feel that that's a big liability that where you have to adjust for a lot of stuff and it makes it really difficult um, getting close to that optimal uh, two channel sound. Um, my friend was was kind of able to to do what's almost the, the highest standard and um, it, it is extremely uh, impressive but yeah I'm not too crazy about surround sound uh, I have to say that I, I find it uh, too compensating generally so um, it, it's good for the price. It, it, it can be good with some few uh, receivers that are very expensive that you run in, in an optimal way. But for me, it's just, you know, too much. Um, it, it goes too much away from the from the intimacy, intimacy true intimacy of two-channel two sound. Got barrier technology. It's got our carbon technology. It's got our diffusion technology and our foam technology. It's all been designed around just the two-channel listening experience. And obviously the goal with any two-channel listening room is to have the speakers disappear and just listen to the music. I think when I first started in the business, our tagline was listen to the music without hearing the room. And that's what our goal has always been. And it, it should be, it should be about the music and, and not the gear. And yeah. like I always say in my videos, you take a small price system. Yeah. The, just um i i mostly agree with him but this isn't a small price system Th this is griffin one of the, t the top 10 transistor brands out there it's a pretty good rack that looks like i'm not sure but that looks pretty expensive that brand um these things are important um but looking at this hi-fi well, not hi-fi wi-fi sort of stuff concerns me a bit because I'm, I'm thinking is this guy listening to to streaming via some kind of a, a streamer over here or what's going on um so that that's a bit concerning i mean i mean i mean he can probably make it sound a lot better than normal but i i think that really would downgrade the the whole uh, experience the potential but 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 yeah, he is he is partly right. You want you want to make it less about the equipment, so the equipment gets out of the way. I I I fully agree. Put it in a good room, and it'll sound like a much more expensive system. Now you take in a very expensive system like we have here, put it in a great room, and it'll sound fantastic. So there's a interesting. These are apparently the uh, I think is this the. I think this is the power amplifier, yeah, power amplifier. Um, hmm. Interesting power cables. Yeah, interesting. But Griffin, just, just a really good solid transistor brand. Direct relationship to room quality and room has to come first. It really does. And I think that's where a lot of us out there chase the gear try to buy a, a little bit better amplifier but if your room is not out of the way true he, he he is he is to some degree right you know you have to get a proper room but a lot of people are stuck in flats and they can't do anything about the rooms and 
the landlord won't let them do anything. So there, are, there's also that problem, you know. And I know a guy who, um, who's still my friend, and uh, he just he has some of the best gear in the world, but the most horrible room, where it's like fourteen, fifteen square meters of space, and it's shared with some B and W speakers on a projector type of uh, um, setup with a plasma screen and you have this like Verity Sarasto speakers but then behind one of the speakers it's opening up into the kitchen you know and that's just it's just painful watching so so good gear um, totally downgrade uh, the sound so it only sounds like you're using 5% of, of what you paid for um it's just painful because because i heard it before he got the speaker uh, at a different uh, friend's place and it just sounded so much better um so yeah room means a lot a hell of a lot you may or may not be able to hear what you're paying for that extra money and the difference between True. a fifty thousand dollar amplifier and a five thousand dollar amplifier is a small difference that, that that is true, but but it's not only about the room. It's it's a it's a lot like what I show on my channel. That it's about all the small differences, all all the tweaks, um, customizing it, and and especially having a a good room helps a, a huge deal. You can make a system like this sound at least three, four, five times better by not changing anything in the system, not changing. Um, the position of, of the speakers or anything just by changing the room ha having a proper room and making the room work with the speakers so yeah it's it's an important part it's and that's also why i wanted to make this video it's important to do that but the engineer who designed the amplifier spent a lot of time to get that little bit of difference so the goal is to get as much of the room out of the way as we can and we've done that in this room and going to be hard for me to leave and go back home i'm going to tell you it's just fantastic the sound stage is huge we got depth we got width we got height we got resolution and detail we got attack and decay everything that you want and with all those things working together the speakers disappear and that's what you want also so you spend a lot for your gear and in the outcome and in the real situation in a room it, it's got to disappear, so it's kind of ironic if you think about it. Spend a lot of money for your gear, I can decay there? everything that you want. How does that work? And with all those things working together, the speakers disappear. And that's what you want also. So you spend a lot for your gear, and in the outcome, and in the real situation. It... So how does this work? Where does he get his... Oh, okay. Speaker cable goes over to amp. And what goes on here? Does he get his power from here? Uh, not really sure how that works, but very interesting. Very interesting. Also very important having a, a carpet uh, underneath. If he didn't have a carpet, it would probably sound very boomy in the room. In a room, it, it's got to disappear. So it's kind of ironic if you think about it. Spend a lot of money for your gear in order not to see it. And also that rack thing that he has down there is probably artisania or something like that. I'm telling you guys, when when you've got a, a good system like this, you need artisania or or stuff like that, uh, racks that that really take care of the vibrations. It just you would not believe the difference in in in, in space, the, the feeling of space, and control over tonality, and and that really tight uh, sophisticated micro level uh, detail that you get from from having good racks um, truly important and uh, you can actually destroy a, a very good rack and a very good system by just having a, a carpet that is way too soft and fuzzy so you need like a good coupling so you don't want to li like a rug that's that's too soft where the whole thing just gets uh, ultra dampened in, 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 in a too conservative way. So, yeah. And that's kind of an interesting twist that us uh, audiophiles go through. So, 
Very proud of the room. The quality level is good. The sound is just off the scale. I wish we could do some recordings in the room and so you could you could hear it, but it would never do justice to the room. You you really have to come and experience the room. So if any of you are thinking about building a room and, and want to listen to an actual room built, I don't think you would mind if somebody came. Obviously, contact me first so I can uh, clear it with you, but he would probably be more than willing to give you a demonstration like in order not to see well, it, look, and that's kind of... And you have to see that... Uh, I just want to see if I can go back. Um, this is a pretty hard carpet, and you, you kind of need a, a carpet that, that is a bit on the hard side because you want the reaction between the speaker and the gear and all of that to have a very good um, connection. Um, so you get that, I wouldn't say bouncy type of, of, of response, but you get a more lively, um, firm response compared to if it was just like a very fluffy, too soft uh, type of, of carpet, then it would just um, take some of that edge and detail and liveliness away. So you just, you, you want to think about things like this, if it's at all possible. So um, overall, I'm extremely uh, impressed and um, I just uh, yeah I wish I had a room like that and and definitely if you can afford it try and go with the solution that that he uh, suggests from acousticfields.com I, I am impressed I can see that it does a lot of good and, and I've been to rooms that were similar like this and uh, yeah it, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that it, it does help. It does help a lot. And um, you could, in, in theory, have, have a, a piece of gear that's not nearly as good and where you just use a lot of that money instead on the room. Trust me, it will uh, many times do uh, a lot of good instead of just using it on, on regular hi-fi, high-end gear. So yeah, something to take into consideration. Uh, but I still suggest that you do a lot of the stuff that I uh, usually recommend with all the specific cables, plugs, um, uh, and all the other stuff. So yeah, I'm glad that there's a guy that kind of gets it, uh, acousticfeels.com. Uh, um, and I wish him all the, um, the best of luck with his business. I hope that a lot of more users out there of, of good hi-fi gear get to have a, a decent room because I've just been to a lot of places where it, it was always opening up to another room losing the pressure losing the imaging just being like too too much going into uh, too much of a hyper hi-fi type of detail so uh, yeah I'm, I'm, especially when you have a speaker that goes down to 16 hertz my god you know um, my speaker goes down to 18 hertz I think and and you know when you get into that um, sub 20 hertz level it's just that's just insane if you can set it up in a proper way so you can access that uh, you of course need to be like at least five meters away to to usually get those low hertz so um, impressive i'm really impressed and uh, this is me logging out remember to like and subscribe and yeah uh, i think you guys should uh, have a look at this guy it's interesting what he does have a nice day bye